Welcome to the Wild Ones podcast, the show where we chat about bike stuff. I'm Francis, this is Jimmy. What's been going on this week, Francis? Uh, I've just got back from London, where I filmed like five videos in the space of five days. Nice. It was nice but stressful. You, well, you, you were in more than just London, weren't you? Uh, oh, I went to the New Forest. That was part of it. So I was at Garmin Rideout, uh, Action Medical Research, like a sportive slash charity ride in aid of Action Medical Research, which is like a charity that helps children that are in hospitals. Uh, and it was a really great day. When you said Action Medical Research really fast, mm -hmm. I kind of put you going to ride for Garmin and medical research together. And it sounded like you were riding with Garmin in, in the new forest for medical research. That is exactly what I did. No, but like as medical research, not for oh, not well, they for were like a charity. Us. Yeah, mm -hmm. like it was some kind of like Rocky Balbo or Rocky Three, um, <laughs> like Russians in the woods doing weird. Russians no, well, in the no, woods. the Russian wasn't in the, the Russian was in like a science lab, but Rocky was in the woods, and uh, it was a contrast between really. Who knows? Maybe actual medical science. research does use Russian scientists. Could be. Yeah. Mm. Have you noticed that we're talking over each other and it's not messing up? Because of our brand new microphones. <laughs> I, I haven't noticed because I can't hear it. I feel slightly disconnected from Marco Plantani. Can't see him quite as can't well. Can't see him as well, no. However, the audio of this podcast should be better than our previous episodes. And we have these in front of us. I'm very confident that the audio of this podcast will be next week's fluff up of the week. <laughs> 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 It'd be so disappointing, but yes, very likely. The tests that I've con conducted suggest that it's going to be very good, but inevitably something will go wrong. Do you know what my favourite bit about them is? What? What Emily can show us. Hello, this is me on my own microphone now, and I have this. Can you explain for the people who are not watching a video and are just listening to this? All these microphones, all the microphones, we've got three. They plug into a box. What's the, what's it called? Uh, an audio road, interface. Audio interface is the official term. <laughs> it's got a load of buttons on it that make silly noises. It does other stuff as well. More important stuff. But it's good. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I, I, I'm, I didn't want to have to go down this route, but... The original podcast plan was we do 10 podcasts. We commit to 10 podcasts, one every week, um, and then see where we're at to. This is the 11th podcast, and I would suggest that now updating to proper pro podcast audio, I, I'm, you know, that's kind of us committing to this. Is, this is us going forward. This we are it. we are now podcast people. No, sweet. I've been, I've, I'm, in, I'm enjoying it. I like it. I like mm. it. It's, it's nice to talk about stuff and look into your eyes. First thing we're going to talk about is... Ineos Wheels. So I was down in London filming. I did one of the days with Ken, Coach Ken, his mm -hmm. pro cycling coach. And one of the points he was making in one of the videos I was filming with him was that he wished people weren't so obsessed with shiny kit, the shiny kit syndrome. So instead of putting effort and money and time into things that were really make you faster people just spend money on shiny kit instead when you're saying shiny kit you're not talking like a skin suit that's like shiny glossy you're talking about shiny kit as in like cool things yeah anything the, the latest fad yeah the latest fad and I, well, I won't say this one's a fad but it got me thinking because i was after filming with ken i was then on garmin ride out there was an ineos rider there and they were using a set of wavy wheels and can actually mention these wavy wheels. So it based Princeton Carbon Works, I think they are. Brand. Completely unbranded. There's no branding on them. The black carbon wheel. But they have these waves in between the spokes, which is supposed to be faster. In between the spokes? Like spokey dokies? No, like like the, the in each, there's like a dip. Oh, Zip did that years ago, didn't they? Yeah, it was a similar sort of that thing. That kind of thing, right. But it's one of these, you know, like, is it faster? You'd have to test it. Uh, and Ken was kind of getting annoyed by it. And then I then later found out from... <laughs> An industry, what should we refer to him as? I'm not going to name names because it's probably secret information that no one's supposed to know about. Industry expert. Industry expert. Someone, the inside man. <laughs> that basically Ineos, Team Ineos, best funded cycling team, very successful. They used to be Team Sky um, until they changed sponsors. They are sponsored by Shimano for group sets and wheels. But some of the riders use these, I assume they are, Princeton wheels. Right. And they are incentivized that if they win on the wheels, 
they get an extra payout, so they're paid more, despite them testing slower in wind tunnels. There's a lot to unpack here, isn't there? <laughs> so, so presumably Shimano haven't got an exclusive agreement with them for wheels. No, I know Shimano, having worked with Shimano in the past, they really like people to be... On their wheels. Uh, they have On a, their like a term for it. They're like, you're a, a blue, a super blue, or some, some weird thing. Chris was saying it the other day. Super blue. Yeah, team blue. Because <laughs> it's like wheels, group set parts, kit, they make shoes, they make helmets, they make everything. Um, or it's laser helmets. Laser helmets is Shimano. But oh, is um, yeah, so they like, they like all their sponsored riders to have as much of that as possible. Mm -hmm. And SRAM do the same thing, you know, with zip wheels. But um, particularly with the team, they, have, they would like their riders and supply all the team with those Shimano wheels, yeah. which are great wheels, super fast. However, some people on the team don't ride them in certain circumstances, and they're incentivized to. What, what this says to me is... Allegedly. <laughs> performance <laughs> has very little to do with product and everything to do with how good the rider is. Because hmm. if, if they are at that level willing to ride a slower wheel, they're, they're not worried about the slower wheel actually making them slower. Because it's such a small difference. Well, yeah. Yeah. I, I like... Yeah. Having said that, if someone, if one of the riders was doing something which, where it really mattered, say like our record. I was thinking people exactly people are meticulous, that. aren't they? Like yeah. testing the like bike and the frame and everything. And it's just, it all is down to how slippery you can get. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas in a prologue of a race, it might be a TT, a stage, a, a stage of a race where they have a chance of winning, but it's not going to come down to one what. Yeah. Then... Clearly, it's worth it for a payday. That is wild. Isn't Would you that? get that in F one? No. Well, no, because ev everything's tied in in that. Mm. It's like properly like lock lock. There's just everyone just uses their stuff, but it's probably all the same stuff basically. Mm. Like the margin in F one is probably so tiny that it, it's practically the same stuff. Mm. I wonder how much that just the standard kit, like your standard rider, gets tested in a wind tunnel with the equipment that they're using in a race. On, standard, on a pro team. Like, a pro team standard rider. So like a domestique, do you mean? Yeah. 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 Like, do you reckon they pop them in a wind tunnel? And it, it, Like, there's too many different variables, too many different types of wheel. Some people... Like, this is another example that Ken... I don't want to put spoilers out for the video I'm going to release with Ken. But it is <laughs> an interesting... This is an interesting fact. He bought... He's been... He does a lot of TTs. You know, he's a very accomplished rider. He's elite road racer at one point. I think he's, he's backed off a bit now. Um, but he used to race... Uh, a giant Trinity advanced TT bike, mm -hmm. which was, it's like 10 years old. And he got really, he's got really good position on it. It's super fast. And then he finally, after years of riding, it was like, I'm going to upgrade. He spent about eight grand on a new Trek, which is on paper faster. You know, some people test way faster using it. It's a brilliant bike. It's got like integrated hydration systems and all this stuff spent all the money on it, switched his group sets over because he's got all these parts which are like carbon chain ring and all these extra ex arm extensions which are supposed to be more aero. And it tested nearly 40 seconds slower in a 10-mile TT. In a 10-mile? 10 10-mile 10 TT. Wow. Yeah, it was like for, 37 seconds or something. For, for someone that, like for someone as consistent as he will be and fast as he will be, that is huge. It's isn't huge. It? And uh, for the viewers at home, we can flash up a picture um, I'll send this to you, Emily, of Ken in the two different positions. Yeah. The positions are identical. And he spent lots of time in a wind tunnel and the, the people helping him with that are, are just like, we can't work it out. That's we don't know why. That but it's an ex it's because like it's a different shaped frame. Some people, so their body shape will just suit a different shaped frame. Yeah. And the same surely would be the case with wheels. Because that air is going over your front tyre, the wheel, and then it's hitting your calves. So what if some people with different shaped calves, calves, calves. suit <laughs> calves, they would suit a wheel without waves in. Or maybe some of them would suit them with waves but in. But 37 seconds is Massive. huge. That's like, you know, having a completely different, like, Bike front position. end. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's really surprising, mm -hmm. just to that extent. Yeah, yeah. I think, what for me, what it highlights is something that I'm very passionate about, and that, None of it matters. 
<laughs> buy what you can afford, ride it, get fit, have a good time, enjoy yourself. Because, you know, I, I think of people like James Jobber. He's literally just come back from racing at, like, UCI level in some thing or other all around the world. This is our mate who works at Bike Shop down the road. Yeah. So and he's a semi-pro. You're like, you're, yeah. He rides for a continental team. Yeah. Pro Conti. Yeah. Um, and he's constantly racing in, like, Barbados. And Mauritius. Mauritius and things, yeah. yeah it's good. And he, Thailand. He's, he's just Great. come back from a stage race, which is like, you know, it's a really, really high standard. Mm. And as far as I'm aware, I've never heard him ever talk about like aero training. He doesn't win tunnel tests. He, he's a coach himself. He focuses all of his energy on like his own performance. Yeah. And yeah, obviously yeah, he's yeah, got a good yeah. bike and he's got good equipment and it's all top end and, and this and that. But he, he, you know, he doesn't care if his sponsor says wear this helmet or wear that helmet because it doesn't really make that much difference to him. His focus is on his actual performance. He knows what his numbers are. And he's, you know, if that gets him a wing, excellent. excellent. If it doesn't, it doesn't. He's not looking at those like, should I wear aero socks or not? I just can't, like, can you imagine Job aero wearing socks aero socks? Is a bad example. He will, he will wear aero socks because that's one of the cheapest bang for buck gains. Like, Oh, when I was saying aero socks, I was thinking of the like overshoes, you know, the like. You're not allowed to. You're not. No, unless it's cold. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Has that always been the case? That. Yeah. No, they changed it. Really? Yeah, yeah. That was Because I was raised where everyone was using aerosols and suddenly BC, British Cycling at least, I don't know if it's UCI rules, but like, you're only allowed to wear those if it's, What's if the it's rule? cold. Well, how do they define cold? Mm -hmm. With a thermometer? Well, yeah, well it's, it's, it's like a set temperature. I don't know. Yeah, to be fair, in, I, don't know the, I don't know the specifics of the rule. In triathlon, I think it's if the water temperature is under, it's like 15 or 16 degrees. The wetsuit? Well, wetsuits are compulsory. Oh. And I think it might even be that if it's over that, you're not, because obviously wetsuits make you a lot faster. So I think it's if it's over a certain temperature, you're not allowed a wetsuit. Interesting. But that is speculation. I can't remember yeah. what the rules are. I mean, are. To, to counter that, I get what you're saying about James. However, Ken would smash him in a TT, despite being less fit. So when it is a race against the clock, thing like aero is 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 king. But then how much does it cost? Like people focus on the wrong things. It's it's sort of like yeah, do all the things that really make you faster up to a point, and then start spending money on aero stuff if you want to. Yeah, yeah. I think people people focus, it's like they they obsess with supplements and wavy wheels and things like this when they should really be focusing on well, I don't know getting a wind tunnel test is quite a good example because that like really does show you what's faster and what's not getting lower and training in a low down position on the bike it's like the free stuff surely but, that's but, but should that, be higher priority the the example you just gave there of training in a lower position is in my opinion more important than getting aero tested because the problem with aero testing for a lot of people is the testing will say, this is your best, most optimal uh, position, but they might not be able to ride that position ever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like ever. Well, a like, huge part of getting faster in a TT is training in that position. Yeah, absolutely. Huge. Which is why Chris always used to ride so much time on his TT bike. Well, he's like, his turbo bike was his TT bike. Yeah, I think it still is, to be yeah. honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but like, mm. just getting an aero test, like if I was going to get back into racing, I wouldn't even... It wouldn't even cross my mind as something I would waste money on. No, of course. And um, sadly, it's the stuff that makes the biggest difference is the non-exciting. It's go and ride 20 hours a week, yeah. mostly easy. Yeah. And that is what makes the big difference. Yeah. But yeah, I thought it was just an interesting, like I found out about that. I'm like, mm, the wavy wheel thing. Is it overrated? Is it an overrated, underrated? No. Cycling Mikey has also been in the news. Do you know Mikey? I, I remember seeing your video with Mikey. Yeah. Go back. You're on the wrong side of the road. Go back. Go back. Don't drive into me. Go back. Why are you hitting me? We're trying to touch me again. I'll smack you. Self defense. Why are you driving into me? Hey Siri, dial nine nine nine, please. No, you don't. Get out my way. Gotta go back, mate. People have caused a lot of crashes here. This is why I'm here to look after my friends. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. My name is Mike, and I ride around with a GoPro in London and I film drivers behaving badly. And I saw him like, hung out with him about two years ago. Yeah. Well, I met him about two years ago. So he's a guy who has become quite well known. He has a YouTube channel where he originally just recorded his rides and he used to ride a recumbent through London. And then he started getting and recording incidents. So 
there would be weird ones where like some people shouted abuse at him and he kind of put that online and it got a lot of views. And in more recent times, he's been filming stopping people in Regent's Park who are driving the wrong way down the road because people hop the queue mm -hmm. and then they drive very unsafely around this corner. It's become known as Gandalf Corner because of him. Because he's, you shall not pass. Ah. Oh. <laughs> so he'll oh, stand in the road yes, and stop this. cars yeah. from from breaking this, you know, going on the wrong side of the road, round a blind corner mm. where cyclists would want to turn. So it's really, it is dangerous. Fantastic work. Uh, the other thing he uploads quite often is spotting phone drivers. And he doesn't really go out to get them. He, he He's just, or he's always in the same spots because he, he commutes through, I think it's Hyde Park in London yeah. and a couple of other places. And there's always queues of cars um, usually moving quite slowly and there's always people on their phones and he'll record them through the window, get the evidence of them on the phone because it has to be like actually sending a text. Mm -hmm. uh, there is some there is some rules. I think they might have... They changed the law. They recently. changed the law. You're not allowed to touch, touch your, phone. your phone. So it used to be different. It used to be you had to you know, get the evidence of that but now it's, a, you know, he just will occasionally catch people on their phones and he'll report them to the police once they've been... Um, seen to by the police well, whether they've either gone to court or they've been fined or whatever happens he'll then upload the video to youtube and they tend to get quite a lot of views because sometimes there's people who react very aggressively towards him i feel like hasn't he he's even done a few like famous people as well that he's caught as well isn't yeah he? guy ritchie was that what he yeah, was yeah who was uh, actually to guy ritchie was very uh graceful yeah <laughs> I don't think he's had any famous people who have flipped out. But usually they'll get a fine. They might get points on their license. Uh, the argument is that, you know, especially in a park, um, even if you're in traffic, you shouldn't be using a phone because you, you're not paying attention and you could start moving and someone could be crossing. What if it's a small child? Uh, so there's lots of things that can go wrong. He has been in the news, the newspapers recently. Yeah. Multiple newspapers. I think in the Times, definitely. Uh, and the headline was Britain's Most Hated Cyclist. And that was the Sunday Times magazine. Um, he's caught 1,400 drivers using their phones so far, <laughs> leading to 1,800 penalty points, which is the points you get on your license here in England. Um, and he's racked up £110,000 worth of fines. That's impressive. That is uh, big numbers. I, big numbers. Well, he, he isn't going to be hated by the local council. we got Frank Lampard and Chris Eubank caught using their phones. <laughs> um, I mean... I think he's brilliant. It, I've always wanted to do videos <laughs> around, like, catching out close passes and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I, 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 or even not videos, just actually just reporting people and stuff. But mm. it's a lot of admin. So, it like... I'm, it is. Well, I think it's brilliant. Yeah. I mean, he uh, the, the common argument for people is that, oh, he's a vigilante. You know, he's um, going out of his way to find people. And so, even if he was, so what? <laughs> I don't, met him, don't do illegal stuff. Well, I met, to put it into perspective, I met him for one morning and in his spots, it was a commute, no, before work, he was, was going to go to work. I met him. We we're going to film a little video, an interview with him, and just about what happens, what what's his reactions being like, and and how he started. And within ten minutes of being with him, he had already seen like three people on their phones. Uh, I was riding along with him, and there was a guy in the Royal Park. Uh, it was a Regent's Park, I think we were in, and they were driving uh, one of those golf buggy things, and he a, a Royal Parks one. Yeah on his phone, just driving directly at me. <laughs> and I'm like, literally had to shout at the guy, like, what is going on? And <laughs> then you had Pimlico Plumbers, who are notorious, like the guy oh, who runs that, yes. and the guy's just an absolute uh, and and hates cyclists. Yeah. One of their vans illegally drove through the park, like in front of us. So it's like, I can kind of believe it. Like he doesn't have to go looking. No, yeah. So yeah. It's just, it just happens. But yeah, I know of like, we, I have on my phone or historically had on my phone the YouTube app and you can see all the comments and the video I made with him, it gets a lot of people Haters. who hate him. <laughs> yeah. They're just like, this guy, blah, blah, blah. his time is coming. It's like, I think well, the, his that, time has been coming for quite a while. Maybe they'll all, all talk. The, the, vid, the, the title, the headline, Britain's most hated cyclist is like perfect. He definitely is Britain's most hated yeah, cyclist. It's true. But it's true. 
For what? Catching people doing illegal stuff? Yeah, well, the people that hate him are the people who are, obviously, they want to do that yeah. illegal stuff. And typically the uh, the same people that just hate cyclists in general. Yeah, so, so it doesn't probably, matter. Probably a lot of taxi drivers in there, definitely in London. Oh, him and the cabbies on Twitter. I bet that's fun. Mm. But lovely guy otherwise. Mm. Lovely guy anyway. Next up, Zwift loses out on the UCI eSports World Champs. To a company that nobody's ever heard of. <laughs> <laughs> have, you seen, I, have you seen about this? It's a, yeah, it's a weird name, isn't it? So I was like, I, like wait, it was weird enough for me to be like, I need to do a bit of digging here. Yeah. Um, whereas I think I've, you know, you every now and again hear of like a, e, a Zwift rival popping up and you, you don't even think to look into it. Because it's never whereas, that good. They, there's, there's a couple, like, uh, Ruby is one, isn't it? And that but I, puts me off because it's a, like a virtual character in a real world video, right. which just looks weird. I play a lot of video games, or historically did. Um, Still I don't really play Zelda now, <laughs> but used to back in the day. And Zwift looks like a proper video game. Yeah. And I think that's what attracts, attracts me to it. Why do you call it a video a game rather than computer game? Oh, good question. Well, it's not really. It's a very inappropriate question <laughs> for a cycling podcast. <laughs> don't know. Video game. Okay, cool. Computer game. Cool. Because it's not played on the computer always. Where else is it played? PlayStation. Computer. Not really a computer, though. Well, is it? it is. Literally nah. got processors. Nah, whatever, mate. Um, the virtual cycling platform, My Whoosh, which just sounds <sighs> do, like do they, every other thing in cycling. Go, my Whoosh. It's Wahoo, Whoop. I my actually, whoosh. when I first saw it, I, it was cut off on what I was looking at it. It was My Whoosh. And I was just like, oh, is this a, a Wahoo product? Oh, My Whoosh, yeah. But it's not. They're going to host the, ch- they're gonna host the championship for the next three years. Um, that's a long three year deal. deal. Wow, big deal. Uh, it came as a surprise to lots of people as the market leaders Zwift are so dominant in this space. That's true. Like, if you're going to do an indoor ride thing, and your people is, is what other big ones are there? Sufferfest, it's like videos that you watch where you do it. Well, that got bought by Wahoo, did it? Yeah, so, so I what, think they I implemented th- that into their, I think they've built that into their right stuff. Um, they're an Abu Dhabi based company. Oh. Oh, I see. Which is why they have lots of money. Their platform is similar to Zwift in that riders cruise around virtual worlds. Unlike Zwift, rides are currently free to use. Currently. The racing costs money, so there's other features there that cost money. I pretty much only use the free ride thing in Zwift. I just like racking up the points and the miles and unlocking stuff. So maybe I should try this. Um, My Woosh are putting lots of money into the esports space. In April, they hosted their inaugural race championship series, which had a prize pool exceeding one million dollars. One million dollars. Yeah, that's I feel, split, I, there's a pool I, of money. That's not I feel like, like Doctor Evil. Them. Yeah, <laughs> one million dollars. Where? How, what's the prize pot for the Tour de France? Uh, more than that. But I bet it's not like it's it's more, but it's not like that much more. Surely. Emily will find out for us. <laughs> Some cyclists who've used the platform have reported bugs in the system. And the software crashing mid-ride. Oh, it's, well, but it's new though, isn't it's it? It's going to be a new piece of software. Everything's buggy. St- like you know, even we didn't Zwift even there wasn't even a beta version. Is it? I mean, do they say it's r- like a proper well, release yeah. or is it? I'm, I'm assuming if they've got the gig, it's going to be legit. Well, it must. Yeah, and yeah, they've yeah, done point. all their pre-testing, but you know, stuff takes time. Um, some people have branded the move sports washing, which is where individuals, groups, or governments use sport to improve reputations ar- uh, tarnished by wrongdoing. Uh, the UCI recently awarded the 2028 Road World Championships to Abu Dhabi, Abu Dhabi 2. So it sounds like Abu Dhabi are spending a lot of money on cycling, cycling mm-hmm. which seems odd. Yeah, huge. Well, I, I, well, I, I, I guess they're spending money on everything. Like the, they were at a trade show recently. Maybe it, was, it wasn't Ken. Someone I was down south with, and they were there, and then suddenly like the, the, um, their stall, my whoosh, my yeah. whoop, my whoosh. whoosh. Yeah, they, their stall was just massive. And they were like, we never heard of these guys. And they've got one of the biggest stalls in this bike show. Where have they come from? And, then, you know, they're going big. Is it time that Zwift had a competitor? Um, a legit competitor? D- does it really matter, though? Because, like, I'm, I'm, I'm never indoor training going like, oh, I wish I had other options available to me. Because Zwift's already good. Well, it's, it's fine. It's just there. I'd rather not have to pay the 15 quid a month or whatever it is. But like... I think it's expensive. It's, it's, 
It's a significant amount of, amount of money, and I wish Zwift had more. I wish there was more maps. I wish there was more to level up, more unlockables. And they're really lacking there. Well, And I don't see why it's so hard to add more. But they've got their new controller, which they've said is going to have more functionality. So clearly they've got a bigger plan, which is going to give them some USB over yeah. other, other platforms. Yeah. I think the competition is good, though. It looks at, uh, Looking at some of the gameplay, it looks very similar to Zwift. The weird thing about Zwift and just that kind of like e-training space is I do not care. Like, I enjoy indoor training. Mm. I do not care about Zwift and like all of the digital stuff. But I don't know why just having a little avatar moving just makes it more interesting. I don't even oh, watch so it. so much better. I'll put like music on and have headphones yeah, in, or yeah, I'll yeah, watch yeah, a TV yeah. show or something. I'm not even, it's just glancing at it every now and again. And it's just enough to make it feel more than just like I'm sitting in a room sweating on my bike. This oh, is yeah, yeah, yeah. You're making progress. You're working towards something. It's not just a number, is it? It's weird. It makes isn't a big it? difference. It is, it is weird that it. it's good. I, I, if my whoosh is free, which it is for now, I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna give it a go. You'd, yeah, and if it's good, potentially switch because it's free. Is it gonna stay free? I doubt it, but who knows? Mm. Um, one of the things that I, I googled it to have a look at some of the, some of the imagery of my whoosh, and and some of the imagery was like a digital version. So like like the the Zwift avatar. So like a digital person on a digital bike. And usually when you look at Zwift, the image is there on them that on one of the maps. Whereas some of their like imagery is obviously like transitional imagery. It's a digital person on a digital bike in a digital like bedroom. And I'm just like, is, th is this what it is? You just watch yourself training in your own room, but digitally. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I was you, like, yeah. surely it can't be that because that is horrible. <laughs> that is literally one of the worst things ever. No, watching no, no. They watching haven't, yourself. They haven't done a good job on their website, at least, of showing gameplay. It does feel like it's not ready, doesn't it? to go on YouTube and watch some it? random guy's video about it mm. to actually see what it looks like, what the UI looks like and stuff. Yeah. But I don't know. If it, I mean, one of the maps is Abu Dhabi. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. So digital racing for money, I think, is very interesting. Obviously, as we've learned from a certain other YouTuber, it can there is cheating involved. There, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah people, it's very well, easy there's to money cheat involved in esports. Like especially the prize pot. I mean, they, they have to be really careful with cheating. Yeah. And they have to so I think the only real solution for this kind of event and money being available as the prizes is to have it in the same location. It can't be done remotely. Did you know yeah. that Sunderland is currently building one of the biggest esports arenas in, I think, Europe or wow. something or other? Esports is massive. And presumably it is for stuff like this. It's essentially a space where people can come together. You know, like you, you could fly in all of the best e cyclists in the, well, like, e, I don't even know what you call them. Digital, still athletes. Yeah, Digital but, it's, but athletes. then like e-sport, e-cycling sounds like an e-bike, but it's not. E-racing. Mm. So whoever these amazing people are, you can fly them to one exhibition venue, you can have a live audience, you can do all of the weigh-ins and control all of the equipment so you know there cannot be any cheating. Yeah. And, you know, it becomes a show. And then you sell pay-per-view. As well. That's yeah. how it should be. I think that's, that's the, it's, I'm it's always arts. been, I've stand by this, said this years ago, if they could get this model correct, it could really inject a lot of money into cycling, into pro cycling, yeah, road cycling, which it needs. Because, you know, like football has ticket sales every single week. Rugby is the same. There, there is none of that in cycling. What track cycling, which is really complicated and hard to get into. Yeah. And I, I, I think... Like, as a spectator or as a as rider? As a spectator. Right. As a spectator. Yeah, It's it not is. as simple as it, as it could be. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, like people, f f it, it could be that. It could bring in ticket sales, but it doesn't. Yeah. So something else like this really could make a big difference. And I hope it will. Because yeah. look at how many kids watch the live streams of Zwift. Cam Jeffers, YouTuber who posts a lot of Zwift stuff, it's like 2 million views on a video. What? Yeah. Because kids are watching it and it's a video game. So it's exciting, cool. Like how, that's two wicked. Million? That's amazing. Yeah, I didn't think there was two million people that watch cycling YouTube. <laughs> well, I'm get. It's not just cycling YouTube, is it? It's kids watching it. Like, oh, this is a cool new esport. 
No. I'm going to watch this. It's you a think? live stream. Yeah, yeah, because it's like the Twitch people. Wow, we're going to have to do some of that then. Hmm. You can you can do that. Yeah. Get fit. Yeah. Hey, I'm already fit. <laughs> On to our big question of the day. Back to wheels. Controversial yep. subject though. Hookless. The problem of hookless wheels. Do you know what a hookless wheel is? So I think a hookless wheel is a rim where the internal profile of the rim is like flat. Yeah. So like old rims, anyone that has changed their own tire, which is probably most cyclists, but not necessarily all cyclists, you would have like a, a, a little lippy bead thing on the tire and on the rim and they like hook together mm -hmm. and it is really tight and secure. Yeah. Whereas there's now a technology which is hookless, which is a flat rim, but the tire still has like a little edge on it though, doesn't it? It's a normal tubeless tire. Yeah. It's not like a special tire you're using for them. It's a normal tubeless, it has to be tubeless ready um, so my, clincher. My first thought is why? It seems ridiculous. It's basically because it's cheaper to manufacture. Uh, if you go on like Envy's website, so all, so all of Envy's wheels, road wheels, all of Zips road wheels, some Mavics, I think they're all road one, uh, Giant are making wheels, they're, they're loads of, well, all of Envy's, all of Zips are hookless. Other manufacturers are starting to have a few in the range which are hookless as well. Some brands refuse to do hookless as of yet like Roval, so specialized wheels. So from a consumer perspective, it makes no difference. Uh, it makes a negative difference because your tire might explode off the rim if you put too much pressure in. Whereas in the historically non-hookless, like a, a hooked rim, you can go really, really high pressure without anything that bad happening. But presumably a hooked one still has a tolerance, just it's significantly higher. A hooked wheel. Yeah. 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 Presumably not with a standard pump, though. No. Uh, well, I know this for a fact, because me and Dov from Parkour tested this the other day, which is going to be in a video uploaded to this channel soon. Uh, we tested a hooked wheel and a hookless wheel from the Parkour range and pumped them up to see how high we could get. And, well, spoilers again, the hooked wheel, we couldn't get it to blow off the rim. The pump was just, it was that. Uh, 180 PSI more, and we couldn't get any more in there. I get scared when I pump stuff too high. Yes. But I think there's a reason for this. I once, I, I, have I told this story before? When I was a very small child and air pumps at car, uh, petrol station forecourts used to be free. Yeah. I was probably like, I, I bet I wasn't even 10 years old and I had a little kid's bike with tiny wheels. I was like, oh, my tire needs pumping up. So I rode myself to the petrol station around the corner because I lived in a very urban environment and decided to tr pump up my, my tire with a car thingy-majiggy and it like blew up in my face as a small child. So I, I, I presumably I'm just scared, scared of, of pumps. It forever. Or I just have an awareness of that. So I <laughs> ride trauma. everything at like 10 uh, PSI. You know. I, had one, I exploded one in Mauritius with, at a petrol station, exactly the same. <laughs> but the wheel I was using didn't have any holes in the rim. Yeah. So because it was tubeless, I think the air went into the chamber, like the fair, the carbon yeah. of the wheel. And it was just it had nowhere to go. And the uh, carbon went boom and just exploded all over the guy from the Mauritian national team who I was riding with. I think I, I think you basically just did a song which we're probably going to get a copyright hit for Oh, now. tick, 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 boom. Yeah. Tick, oh, no, tick, hopefully tick, not. Tick, boom. <laughs> so... Most hookless wheels have a maximum pressure rating from the manufacturer. They say don't exceed 72 and a half PSI. Right. Most of them. They vary a little bit. If you go on Envy's website, they're like, oh, if you have a 25 mil tire, it's this, and a 28 mil tire, it's this. Um, and that's what they recommend. However, people go over that very easily yeah. if they don't know that their wheels are hookless, which I imagine happens quite a lot. Even to make it even worse, we, <laughs> I won't mention the shop, but I had in my hands the other day a giant hookless carbon wheel, which had come straight from a bike shop that sells giants, obviously, <laughs> with a giant tire on the wheel. The hookless wheel. We've been on the giant website and I can't work out. It's so confusing. I can't work out what the maximum pressure is. However, the tire, which is on the wheel, says 
85 to 120 PSI because it's a normal tubeless tire. If someone took that wheel home and inflated it to 120 PSI, I think there would be problems. Well, yeah, I guess if the max of the wheel is actually 73. Exactly. Or 72, whatever it is. But there are bikes being sold with hookless wheels to people who might not necessarily know they are hookless and they're going to have, well, blowouts. I did, I did a bit of digging. Yeah. And that specific example, Giant are saying that that wheel is okay to be run with that tyre as long as you don't inflate the tyre over 73 PSI. So the tyre is fine for that. The problem, I guess, in that scenario is the but then, signage... But no, no, the tyre says, yeah, the tyre says the, 85 PSI on it. Well, yeah, yeah. So, so ultimately the signage on the tyre is probably out of date, but... Why are they selling it then? Well, because it is compatible as long as they only go up to 70-something. So well, presumably... Well, they can't sell it, they can't... They... Presumably what they're doing is when someone buys that bike, they're telling them. You would hope. Well, yeah, I would hope. What if you buy it second hand? What if you, you know, buy it second hand off someone? Well, it's, it's, if you're buying it second hand, it's your responsibility to check that check it's that all it's compatible. Hookless. Here's an example. Uh, Balfe Spikes, which is a big bike chain here in England, uh, they sell the giant, the giant SLR 236 disc brake hookless carbon rear wheel. Nowhere on the product page does it use the word pressure, or PSI, there's nothing, nothing about the pressure whatsoever. It just says hookless clincher. So I could go on that website as a... I think that's normal, though. I think that would be with any wheel set. It wouldn't necessarily say you the max pressure. But I would imagine on the wheel there's a sticker which says do not inflate to over 73 PSI. See, I don't think there is. There will be. There always is. The sticker's all over new bikes. Mm. I, think, I think the problem comes if the shop that you're buying it from doesn't make it clear yeah. what the what you should and shouldn't be doing. Or if you're buying it secondhand, presumably all of the stickers are being pulled off. Mm. So we went on the I've been on the giant website. Yeah. Uh and there's a bit about hookless wheels and the, on the page it says all of the stickers are being pulled off. Mm. So we went on the I've been on the giant website. Yeah. Uh and there's a bit about hookless wheels and the, on the page, it says, what tire pressure should I use? And instead of giving a value, there's a calculator. It then says, notes, never exceed the maximum, max, tire pressure indicated on the rim, the tire, or the rim tape. <laughs> Two, please note that the stated minimum pressure on many current giant tires, e.g. 85 PSI for 25C tires, so that will be the tire that I was looking at. Yeah was originally defined based on a durability test with a 120 kilogram load at 1.5 times the regulated distance. <laughs> yes, it's gibberish. Currently, for all giant tires, this minimum pressure can now be defined as 70 PSI. For 23 and 25C tires, 50 PSI for 28C tires and 45 PSI for 32C tires. Never inflate to less than the minimum pressure. All right, so they're basically saying that the tires that they sell that say 85 to 120 uh, should now be considered to be 73 70 to, to yeah. 120. For a 25. But what you should also factor in is the maximum PSI of your wheels. So everyone that has a hookless wheel set should do some digging and find out what the maximum PSI is. So in most cases, it's going to be 73 PSI. So that says the only pressure anyone in any weight, in any condition can ride, that wheel set and tire combo is specifically at 73 PSI. Why, but why don't they put that on the website? At least just uh, easy to understand, never go over this. What, what it says to me is, don't bother buying hookless. The other thing is, so the, the test that they've done, so the, the high pressure tolerance test for their hookless wheels, which is from the giant website, the tyres inflated to 72.5 PSI first, an average minimum pressure for most riders on 25C tyres, which historically it, it hasn't been, may I just point out. Loads of people are going to put 100 in. And must withstand this pressure for 24 hours without blowing off. Fine. 
Next, the tire is inflated to its recommended maximum pressure and must withstand this pressure for 24 hours without blowing off. Seem the, the, I don't know what that means. The, are they testing a different tire? Right. I think we need to... What ultimately... No, this is the bad bit. After that, the tire is inflated to one point... Sorry, they get, there's a bunch of more tests, like up getting higher and higher pressure. <laughs> Here we go. The, finally, the tire is inflated to 1.5 times the recommended maximum pressure and must withstand this pressure for 24 hours without blowing off. If they're saying the maximum pressure is 72.5 PSI, 1.5 times that is not even 110 PSI, which is, again, within the range of what's printed on that tire. I just think it's outright, like, it's mad. It's mad. It's barely any pressure. I mean, with it's co his, compared to what we've put in tires for all these years, See, it's, it's just not that people are going to mess it up. People are so easily going to mess this up. So what that's, but what I've, what I was unsure, what I've, I've kind of processed this information now. Yeah. It, it, it's two separate things. So what it's ultimately saying is your tire can do 73 to 110 PSI. Your wheel can do a maximum of 73. So it's basically saying that you need to know the compatibility of both parts, whereas what we take for granted because we've been hookless for so long, sorry, hooked we've been for hooked so for so long, is we don't need to factor in the, uh, the maximum pressure of the rim, whereas now we do if it's hookless, which is why I say again, don't buy hookless. <laughs> basically. Like, it's, <laughs> it's, you just, you, you make, it's a cheaper product. If, if the only difference is the fact that it's cheaper in manufacturing, it's just a way that a manufacturer can make our lives oh, no, more they complicated. Claim, uh, they claim better tolerance. To what? In the manufacturing process. We can make a, we can make an, a, a better wheel. Well, my wheels have always been fine. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's 100% a lot of added stress. Potentially, yeah. And potential. I think something that I think we've missed in all of this conversation thus far is why are we even talking about hookless? Wasn't there, I'm sure I was talking to Dov and he was saying that actually there was some, like in a race or something or other, uh, a wheel blew off a rim or something. Oh, some rather. dude. No, so there was a, uh, the reason it's like a topic at the moment. Other people have talked about this on YouTube recently, specifically a guy who put 72 and a half PSI in his tire and it, still blew off. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, like, it's... Are we getting some hookless rims from Dov? Uh, we've got some. Oh, all, the, we go. all the gravel ones are... His gravel wheels are hookless. Well, now I'm scared. Wh no, which is fine because the pressures are so much lower. And like mountain bike wheels have been hookless for ages. Like yep. it's, it's fine because the pressures are really low. Mm. It's when you go high road pressure, yep. you get these issues. Um, but with, you know, I mean, what was the, the guy's taking the video down, so I can't even watch it, but if you, it, it's pressure varies based on altitude. So what if you put air in your tire at ground sea level, and then I rode up that place in Hawaii, right to the top of the really, really tall volcano, and then you're running five PSI more. That's what if that's enough to blow it off your wheel? Um, that would suck, wouldn't it? Then... I, I, that is a fairly niche problem for a start. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Because lots of people go on cycling holidays in places where they ride 2,000 metres up, 3,000 metres up. Yeah, of, of course. But like in the grand scheme of like people that ride their bikes, that's still pretty small percentage of people. Doesn't matter if it's a real safety concern though. Well, I go back to my point, which I've made twice, and this is the Don't third time. <laughs> Don't buy hookless rims. Yeah. Unless yeah. it's for uh, a large volume tyre, i.e. gravel mountain mm. biking. The bit that's... I wouldn't run tubeless on road bikes anyway. I find it slightly annoying that there isn't even another option from Zip or Envy. Their whole range is hookless. Oh, uh, is my, are, my, are my road wheels hookless? Yeah. 202s. Have, have I already got hookless? Yeah, you got hookless wheels. No. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I've got three or three S's. They're like the entry level ones. They'll be hookless. I don't reckon they are. Mm. I don't run them tubeless anyway. Not that that actually makes a difference. Oh, my God. I need to check my wheels, Francis. Mm -hmm. Wide hookless rims. Oh, Jesus. You're going to die. <laughs> Nick, you're having them back. <laughs> but I guess the message here is, I mean, well, what, how, how are, how's the bike industry going to 
solve this. Because they got themselves in a the right pickle. Well, they, they won't. They'll just put the... In my the, opinion, those tyres, the giant tyres should not be sold on those wheels at all. They should either redo this, like, the, they need to be recalled and there yeah. needs to be a thing on every tyre that says hookless pressure, check your wheel, or something like there needs to be instructions. Well, something like that does seem appropriate, but the, the tyre is correct. Minus the fact they've made an, an yeah, you can't an put this all on the tire manufacturers, can you? No, no. I, I, the the thing, what will happen is the brands will just put the onus on the people buying the products, and then inevitably, you, well, in some scenarios, you'll end up popping your tire off and go right. I want to change my wheels, and then you've got to buy another set of wheels, and they go excellent, cha ching. Mm. Well, no. If you pop the tire off, the wheel's fine. Yeah, but you probably are going to be like, well, maybe I don't want these wheels. And then, what, you then buy a hooked wheel? Yeah. From who? Well, a, someone who still does hooked them, wheels. And then the industry goes cha-ching. In 10 years' time where there's no, there's no hooked wheels. Yeah. <laughs> but everyone of them will have caught up and then that'll just be something else we'll have to remember to deal with. Yeah. I know. I know, Francis. Check your wheels if you're watching at home. If you're riding hookless, be really careful with the pressures because 110 PSI is very easy to put in a wheel. And... That exploded off the wheel that we tested. Well, here's a question. What PSI do you ride your road wheels at these days? Mm. 65, 70? Tubed or... But tubeless. I ride 30 mil tyres. Mm, me too. Yeah. But I would still... Uh, I guess at 25, I'd probably ride at 80. Yeah. Which is, which is over on a hooked. Yeah. I, need, I really need to check my bike You need now. to check them. <laughs> you honestly need to check them. Unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> Because you went right up to the Pennines, you're in at 4,000 metres altitude. <laughs> That'll explode. Yeah, but you start at 4,000 as well. Oh, you do. <laughs> Ooh. It's time. It's time, Francis. What's it time for? Overrated. Overrated or underrated? I kind of did Batman voice then. It's taking advantage of having a nice new microphone. <laughs> Time for another round of overrated, underrated. I'm going to read out a list of stuff and you're going to tell me if it's overrated or underrated. Excellent. Are you ready? Yes, I haven't looked at the list. I, I like not looking at the list. I know. I you like, like not looking at anything before I do, you I start. I try that, yeah. yeah. I like to be a passenger. Yes. <laughs> you are pas the passenger. Wiggle. Oh, God. These, this list is always so good. Um, okay, okay, okay. I haven't used Wiggle in a long time. Wiggle is a online retailer that sells bike parts very cheap they're, sometimes. They're massive. They also own Chain Reaction, which were also massive. I think which is basically the fully, same website now. I think they, they're fully international as well. Mm. I think everyone will probably know who they Does are. Does Chain Reaction still exist or is it just uh, it's like a reskinned no. Wiggle? They, if you go yeah, on it. they still they still yeah, exist. It's, it's, but the same products come up on both websites. Okay, back in the day they were underrated because you used to get some banging deals. Well, as a consumer, they often do. They, they still do. Still. Yeah. 105 was so cheap. You could buy 105 the 11 speed. What I don't so like cheap. about them is they are essentially like the cycling version of Tesco in which they go to the big manufacturers like Shimano and they go, look, we're going to buy more group sets off you than anyone in the world. Mm -hmm. So you're going to give us priority. You're going to give us the best price and there's nothing you can do about it. And then the other independent bike shops and other manufacturers or other shops then can only get product more expensive than Wiggler even selling it out. So they are partly responsible for many bike shops going bust. We, we When I worked in a bike shop, there would be times where you just buy stuff from Wiggle. Which is outrageous. To then sell in the shop because it's... Wiggle's profit price, the actual trading price that they were selling parts at was lower than the trade price that bike shops are getting from distributors. <laughs> it's crazy. Like that should not be allowed. It's crazy. And that's the fault of the manufacturers. So they, I mean, but for, from the perspective of a consumer, in the short term... It's great. It's great because you get, yeah. And then their local bike shop goes bust because the, they're, they're turning up and going, oh, can you fit all of these parts that I got for peanuts mm -hmm. off of Wiggle? And mm -hmm. then they don't make enough money because yeah. they're only charging you 20 quid to fit a whole group set. You know what happens when you go, if you bought something from Wiggle, and you turn up, and it goes wrong, you turn up to Nick's shop, you know what he says? 
Oh, he's got a great line, isn't he? Ring, I can't remember what it is. Ring the internet. Ring the internet. <laughs> he should get that on a T-shirt. Sorry, ring the internet. That, that, is, is, that, that is his catchphrase. That is a good slogan. Um, and I think he's well within his rights to say that. Mm. I mean, that's not being funny about working on a certain thing. I know he's like said some things in the past where he's like, oh, I don't want to work on that. It's a pain in the ass. Yeah. I think he is wrong there to have that stance in a lot of cases. What, ring However, the no, how no, ring the internet is legit. Could, yeah. Yeah. That's like someone's gone away, bought something to then bring it in for them to fit and then pay the but it's just like just buy it from the shop in the first place. He'll probably fit it for free. Yeah. It's just like look after your local bike shops. The it is a good thing. So wiggle overrated. Sorry. Yeah. In fact, not sorry. Do, do you know my biggest problem with them is uh, they send sweets out that are, are not vegan sweets, and I think that's outrageous. Oh, they're meat sweets. Yeah, meat sweets. They're literally meat sweets. Yeah. What van art? Uh, who's he again? <laughs> Jokes. Uh, <laughs> um, oh, he's very highly rated. I wouldn't say he's underrated. I'm I, so therefore he is overrated. <laughs> There's no correctly rated. I think, he's I just think, rated. I think he probably is a bit overrated. He's he's very good, but he's not like the best. Otherwise, he'd win everything. You're like, oh, what he kind of does. Well, he doesn't. Well, he, he kind does. of. It's just he's very good. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he's overrated. It's not. Um, it's not GC. He's not going for GC yet. He's got he's got a red bull helmet. He'd have helmet. to be lighter. And I, uh, oh. contrary to you, I think anyone that has a red bull helmet is an idiot. <laughs> An idiot? Yeah. Why? Well, I just think it looks crap. Because they sold their soul. Well, no, everyone's got to make a living, especially if you're in a in a sport that has a limited amount of time where you are capable mm. of being at a high level. I've heard they uh, the Red Bull athletes, they get really well looked after. So it's like health insurance. Unlimited Red Bull. Insane health insurance. So like if they crash and they get, I think we get unlimited Red Bull at the moment. There's so much coming in the, like, yes. in the cupboards. It's full. offensive. Uh, the... They get looked after really well, like the best health insurance, because they want the riders back on the road as soon as they have a crash. Like the mountain bike guys who ride off a cliff and then they're back riding two weeks later because they just put them back together like Wolverine. Um, Super clear. That's great. But they if you're if you're one of those athletes and you have a race that you have to do and you're ill, they'll be like, you have to show up to the start line. It's like really cutthroat. Right. So they're very specific when you work with them. Yeah. Intense part. So let's let's add one to overrated, underrated. Red Bull. <laughs> You've already, they've already given you a fridge, so you, it doesn't it doesn't matter anymore. It's nothing to gain. Overrated, overrated by miles. Canyon. Um, right. So if I didn't know Nick Vieri, I would have never considered the the uh, effect it has on bike shops, mm -hmm. and I would probably say they are maybe even underrated. I think their products look Again, great. Again, it's a wiggle job, isn't it? It's the same thing. Yeah. The, as a consumer, there is no middleman, so you are getting an extremely good product for the price. Well, you're getting, a, a, well, good or not good, that's a whole different conversation. You're getting a very good, you're Deal. getting good value. Yeah, you're getting good value. Like really good value. Emily's mm. got a Canyon bike, has never had any issues with it. Um, I think their products look fantastic. I've very nearly bought one many times in the past. German design. But for some reason just didn't. Um, from a independent bike shop perspective, which is where I've been, t you know, I had conversations with Nick about stuff like this over the years. The it, It's it, like you said, exactly like the wiggle thing. Someone buys a bi bike off Canyon, it goes wrong. They then go to an independent bike shop and go, can you fix it for me? And they go, well, ring you know, the internet, ring the internet. Yeah. I don't know. I have no idea what Canyon's warranty process is like. I guess it must be good because they're massive. Um, overrated or underrated? Um, I Because of Nick, I would never buy a Canyon now. So I'm going to say they're overrated. Yeah. Because it's, what, do you think it's putting him out of business or do you think his, his uh, reluctance to work on them is putting bike shops out of business? I, I mean, he's not going out of business, so it's difficult, but like... I he can be picky, but if bike shops want to continue to thrive or do well, then taking on difficult jobs like the internal routing on a Canyon handlebar, then there are lots of mechanics. James's mechanics, their, their philosophy, like Bicycle Richmond, they're like, bring it on. 
not only are our mechanics better than most, so we'll get the job done faster, so we'll charge you less, but we're, we're, we want to deal with it. We're, that's what we exist for. We'll, have it, we'll, buy, we'll get more mechanics, we'll pay more mechanics. I, th I, think, I think a lot of bike shops will prop up their servicing on the basis of selling the product. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, you make, better, you make a better margin on selling the bike in the first place and then hope that you also get the servicing off the back of it and you know, you know the bike, you know the product. Whereas if someone turns up with a product that has niche, niche headset sizes, niche seat post sizes, all of the other little random bits that are um, odd and not something you can just get off the shelf, then you know it, it causes problems. So either you're going to then get a bike where, for example, you turn up with a Canyon and a Canyon handlebar, go, can you fit it for me? And you go, right, it's 300 quid. Mm -hmm. Or if you'd actually bought a bike off them in the first place and go, you want to change the handlebar, you'll probably go, I'll do it for now. Do you reckon it's uh, net zero though? Like the, the, <laughs> the, because you're getting a better price on the bike than you can afford to, it just ends up costing the same. I think it probably does cost the same, mm. but a rich, a, a rich business or, Rich people get rich, and small indie businesses struggle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So overrated. Overrated. Fluff up of the week. Fluff up of the week. <laughs> so uh, I don't know if you know about this. Oh, I know about this. <laughs> I've heard about this. I uh, I used the bleed kit the other day. Oh yeah. Yeah, in the workshop. Oh yeah. What did you bleed? Uh, my ear. You bled your ear. Yeah. That sounds horrible. So yeah, sometimes you get a oh, trigger warning. Trigger warning. There's uh, this is gross <laughs> potentially for some people. Get earwaxy ears sometimes. Yeah. So every few years, I'll be like six years, seven years, and I'm fine. And then suddenly, one of my ears will be blocked. Or one time, both my ears. I can't can't hear because there's earwax in my ear. What was that? So <laughs> you'd have to go to the doctors and get it fixed. I didn't. I turned up to work. I was with Danny who is a doctor, I turned up to work and I wanted to film a bunch of videos that day. And then I started and I had one ear blocked and I was like, I can't do this. I can't do this. And the whole day was going to be ruined. But <laughs> being a doctor, her first question was, is there anything in here which is like a syringe? And I went, oh, bleed, bleed kit. kit. Specifically the SRAM, Park Tool SRAM Bleed kit. Well, I think, yeah, we've actually got like three or four bleed so I think kits. it has a smaller pipe. Oh, we okay. were looking for the one with the smallest pipe, so mm. it created the most pressure. And you fill that with water, blasted it in my ear, so I was like bent over the sink while she was in, in my ear. Before you go any further, can I put a very strong caveat in mm. that do not do this at home ever or anywhere. This is not something anyone should ever do not, in yeah. any scenario. You yeah. should go and seek medical advice. Mm. Well, I did from a doctor. Not at your doctor, an American doctor, which doesn't qualify as appropriate <laughs> medical advice. Yes, it does. Um, the bleed kit worked excellently. I would, my recommendation would be don't, whatever you do, do not put dot fluid in there because then you will die, which is what goes in the SRAM breaks. Excellent. <laughs> Next up, listeners take over. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> From a listener. Brackets, I lost their name this is, week. Is, that's, is that, that's their Emily. name. You lost their name. Alfred Listener. <laughs> Sorry. I'm looking at getting a carbon road bike, but I'm wary about semi-internal cables. Should I write off a bike if it has semi-internal cables, or is it not a big deal? I'll have electronic shifting on this bike. What, are they worried about, they want it to be all internal? Or they want it to be not internal at all. So if I was to buy a bike that I was going to do my own mechanicing on. Don't I, buy one with the internal cable. I would get as, as close to fully external as possible. Yes. If I was paying a mechanic to do all of the work on my bike. Fully I internal. I, well, I wouldn't care. Well, you mean, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't care. Just It's someone else's problem. Buy the one that looks the way you like it to look. I mean, people... And it's the price you can afford. Yeah, yeah. People want... Um, well, a lot of people, I'm not saying no named man wants this or person wants this but the uh loads of people like having internal fully internal it's no cable yeah it's clean and like that's what it, people seem to all, all of the scott stuff is fully internal i would i've seen nick work on all of them and i would hate to do any of that myself mm. 
it was it's just it's just frustrating and annoying. I just wouldn't want to do it. Yeah. Uh, my time bike is semi internal, I guess you would call it. It's not it's not integrated through the bars and headset, mm-hmm. uh, or maybe it's the headset. It's not the bars aren't integrated, but but the rest of it is. I still wouldn't want to do that. My old school steel road bike is fully outside. Well, actually, no, it's not fully outside. It's partially outside, and it's a dream. Everything's internally fed, so. <laughs> What? Yep. Oh, nice. I think it depends where it depends how it's been, which bits are internal, and some in some cases, an internally or what looks like an internally rooted bar and stem, is actually quite easy to work on. The, the ports need to be big enough and in the right place. Yeah. There's like handlebars that actually have a big enough hole on the front which feeds, it, and then you feed it in, put it in the stem, and then run it down. Some of the systems are great. There's one on a basso that I saw recently. It's fantastic, and it looks really legit, so clean. But you can put any bar on. You can change, you know, you can change everything just easily. To be fair, this this also says electronic shifting. If that isn't SRAM, then I definitely one hundred percent would never want to work on it. <laughs> it's not that bad. If a fully integrated at least there's DI2 well, no, no, no. Set. At least at least di- no, because at least the DI2 cables. There's a DSO wires. Yeah, but I don't want to do this. No, but at least they're small. Can you imagine doing it on like non-electric or mechanical all the way through? Because you're fitting two two brake hoses and two cable outers for the gears into, assuming the bike's two by, into the one hole around the thing. It's just like that's that's a problem, and that's what I did on the Scott. Four cables, one hole. Oh, four cables, one hole. Don't Google that. <laughs> That's all for this episode. If you've got any questions or stories, please send it into wildonespodcast at cademedia.co.uk. Can we ask you a quick favour before you go? Who? Me? No, not you. All right. The viewers. Them. (laughs) If you like this episode, the viewers are your listeners. If you like this episode and you watch the podcast on YouTube, please subscribe. And if you're listening to it on any other platforms, please leave us a review because it helps bump us up the list. And do the liking and the the numbers... Five out of five, 10 out of 10, 100 out of 100. Bosh. Thank you. Bye. (laughs) (laughs) I promise we'll only do that this week. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Because I I don't want to be Tim Westwood. No, no.